Howdy, dude. Well, today we're going to be talking with Congressman Mac Thornberry on our Connect to Congress. He joins us now from Washington. Uh, Congressman Thornberry, how are you today? Good, thanks. Uh, Congressman, we know that ISIS is a threat to many things around the world, and especially to the United States in many ways. I wonder, could you characterize the threat that ISIS poses to our interests overseas? Well, it is a threat not only to our interests overseas, but to our safety here at home, because we've seen all too uh, realistically on our TV sc uh, screens what these people are like. They intentionally behead people because they're Christian, they burn people alive, and they do it to gain notoriety for themselves. And they are doing that not only in the Middle East, but they are encouraging people to attack Americans here at home in the United States. So not only is it what they're doing over there, it's their ideology that is spreading and what they're trying to do over here that is the real concern. What do you think would be the best strategy to deal with ISIS right now? Well, we had a hearing on that today uh, in my committee with the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs testifying. They talked about trying to train the Iraqi army, trying to train some in Syria to put some pressure on ISIS on the ground to go with the bombing that we are helping with. And, and so I think those are steps, but they're not nearly enough. And as a matter of fact, I think ISIS continues to have the momentum. So what we need to do, as, at least as another step, is to remove some of the shackles that we're putting on ourselves. The limits on trainers being going, going into the field with the, those they train. The limits we put on our airstrikes. Because we are not uh, being as successful as we want to be, even with the limited sorts of measures that we're trying. All right. Uh, I'd like to uh, come back home to Texas. You know, uh, former Governor Perry put National Guard troops on the border. Governor Abbott is keeping their, them there as well. Do you think the federal government can do more to uh, secure the border? Yeah. Of course it can and should. It's the federal government's responsibility to secure our borders. Uh, and the federal government has not been fulfilling its responsibility. And thus, the, uh, the uh, state folks have had to fill in some of the gaps. So in Congress, we're trying to push to increase the number of people who are in the Border Patrol, get them more help, give them more technology. Uh, but there is also no substitute for their leadership and the president saying, I want you, I insist that you enforce the law. Obviously, this president has a different attitude. Uh, China has recently been accused of uh, trying to hack into our government. Uh, what are uh, you guys doing about cyber attacks in our country? Well, as you may recall, a few years ago, the speaker appointed me to chair a task force to look at what we needed to do across all the committees in Congress to deal with cyber. So we made a number of recommendations. The House has passed several bills several times. Unfortunately, none of them have yet been able to pass the Senate. So I'm hoping that this latest attack will wake some folks up. Uh, there is no one magic bill that we can pass that fixes our cyber problem. But it, uh, we, this delay, this doing nothing, is, is putting us further and further behind this, this growing trend. Now, on the Armed Services Committee, we are building up cyber forces uh, for a, as a domain of warfare to be able to operate in, in cyber. But we still, as a government, haven't resolved the question of whether the military is responsible for protecting our private networks, our private computers for industry and so forth. And, and we really need to come to grips with that question. Uh, do you think the government should be in control of that? I don't think the government should be in control. What I do know is that with some state actors, there is no way that a private company, even the most sophisticated, are going to be able to stop them. Uh, in the United States government, and especially in the military and intelligence community, we've got the best cyber folks uh, in the world. But right now, their hands are tied about protecting private companies, private networks, even uh, water treatment plants, chemical plants, the electric grid, that sort of thing. That's not government's responsibility right now.
Uh, well, we are in the political season, and I don't think that you're going to want to endorse somebody this early on, but I'd be interested to know about what you think about how many candidates are uh, running for the Republican nomination for president. Uh, it's a lot, and uh, it's uh, not only a lot of people running, we've got some sideshows uh, of candidates who seem to be running for entertainment value, like Mr. Trump. So, uh, you know, it's serious business, and we can laugh about uh, some aspects of it, but as we've seen over the last six and a half years, it makes a big difference who we elect president. And if you'll notice, many of those candidates have connections to Texas these days. Well, that's always a good thing, uh, but we need who, in my view, we need who's best for the country and who has the best chance to win as a Republican from my perspective. I don't know who that is. I've not endorsed anybody, but I am listening uh, carefully to what they say and watching what they do, and um, I hope that the best person emerges. Well, uh, Congressman, thank you very much for speaking with us today. We appreciate it. You're most welcome. Take care.